Hey, how's it going? My name is Mark Marcantano. Uh, I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Calm. Been there for about a year and a quarter now. Uh, and one of my first projects was moving us from standard VMs to containers and Kubernetes. So uh, I've been using Kubernetes since late 2014. Uh, definitely a bit of a fanboy. And uh, have, have helped a handful of teams migrate over to containers and get the most that they can out of Kube. So some smaller, some bigger, but I think that Kubernetes can add value to all sorts of different teams. I'd like to talk a little bit about that today. So how many of you here are already using Kubernetes? Awesome. And then how many are, are thinking about it, trying to make a decision on technology? Awesome. And how many don't really know what Kubernetes is but are interested? Cool. So a few. So starting with what is Kubernetes, uh, if you're familiar with Docker and containers, it's a container orchestration platform. And so really, it takes that, uh, all the power of Docker uh, and lets you use those containers in a composable way uh, and have all the plumbing and piping together to, to really harness that power. And so Kubernetes, you're able to define an infrastructure declaratively using YAML or JSON. So it's super composable. You check it into version control. It's great. Uh, it came out of the Google Borg project, um, which I believe they're, they're still using internally, uh, but it's been open sourced to the community, uh, taken into the CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and has a really strong community around it. It's on all sorts of different clouds. I think most cloud providers are either toying with it or already have something uh, that's up and available. But at Calm, we're using EKS. So who should use Kubernetes? There are all sorts of articles out there uh, you know, saying, do you really need this? Is this really a good fit? Uh, I saw something about you know, someone using Kubernetes for their personal projects recently, and someone saying, oh, you shouldn't do that. Uh, I really think that Kube can add value for, for all sorts of teams, even personal projects. Uh, and it really depends you know, what value you're looking to get out of it. So I think the first thing um, a team should ask is, you know, how containerizable is our workload? Uh, you know, if, if Containers fit your, your paradigm, awesome. Second of all, um, while you can have a monolith running in Kubernetes and have that horizontally scale, the power of Kube really comes from uh, microservice architecture. And so if that's something that you're planning on doing uh, or already have, uh, you're probably a good fit for the tooling around Kube. And so the other big advantage of Kubernetes is the, the iteration speed on infrastructure, on services, on applications. Uh, so if you are planning on scaling up your infrastructure uh, or you know, kind of reworking it uh, very rapidly, I think Kube is a great fit to give you that capacity and give you those paradigms to, to do that easily. Finally, I think um, a DevOps mindset is, is pretty important to using Kube. And so breaking down the barriers between developers and operations, um, you know, not throwing things over the wall uh, just so, uh, you know, make DevOps handle or make devs handle it, but how can you work together to unlock more efficiency um, and deliver more for your customers? Um, so let's say uh, you know, you're looking at these container technologies. Why would someone choose Kube over something like ECS or Docker Swarm or Fargate? For me, I'm, I'm really sold on the community. Uh, you know, chances are if someone's doing it in Kube. If you want to do it, there's a blog post out there. There's someone thinking about it. There's someone figuring it out. It's an incredibly responsive community on Slack, on GitHub, all over the place. And taking advantage of that is huge. Um, also, the cross-vendor compatibility and ability to run Kubernetes locally, um, it, it can run everywhere in a very, very standardized way. And so um, you know, running um, a local dev environment that's your full Kube cluster right on your local machine and then having that directly mirrored on your cloud, uh, definitely when the iteration phase and planning phase is, is highly valuable. So the other thing uh, Kube really offers is high amount of flexibility in terms of container networking options. Uh, CNI plugins um, are, are super, super valuable. And there's a lot of power there that you can unlock um, in how you know, inter-container communication as well as communication with outside services. Uh, I think one of the biggest ads is the service discovery that comes in Kube. Uh, there's no other layer that you have to, to add in there. It's very, I think, straightforward and configurable. And then also the flexible resource allocation. Um, setting up an instance group that you can assign pods to uh, is, is very straightforward and very, very easy. So Kubernetes for small teams. Why might a small team decide to use Kubernetes? 
so I have been the sole DevOps person at a company before, and uh, that's, that's tough. There's a lot of responsibility there, uh, especially in a rapidly growing company. I'm sure you know, many people have been in that situation. And Kubernetes gives you the flexibility to really keep up with the rest of your team in terms of iteration. Anything uh, that you want to build in Kube is probably built in Kube or can be built in Kube. And so, oh, sorry. That, um, that flexibility there is, enables development teams to have a level of velocity that um, you know, DevOps never has to be the, the slowdown there. So on top of that as well, for, for small teams, uh, there's all sorts of open source services that are really easy to deploy in Kube. Uh, you can see the, the Kube dashboard in the background there. Um, so instead of paying for a SaaS platform, you know, if you're, you're starting with a, a, a new project, there's all sorts of things that you can just install, turn up, have your optics, have your logging. Um, these are really well documented and come um, in a lot of uh, automated Kube products just, just pre-set up, which is awesome. And so once again, going back to that strong community as a small team, uh, if you don't have a huge dev team to bounce ideas off of, there's, there's a really vibrant community to uh, come up with some, some awesome, awesome ideas. So with that, the scalability of Kubernetes, um, you know, switching costs is not something you'll have to deal with later on. So how would you implement Kubernetes for a very small team? So Calm has been using EKS for the past six months. Previously, we were uh, on a, a COPS-based deployment. Um, that worked, but you know, had, had some issues. Uh, and I can say we're, we're very happy with EKS. Uh, we were using uh, various plugins for IAMOF and things like that. And having that in there by default uh, without having to configure it has been a huge boon for us. Um, and so uh, being able to, to continue your IAM policies that you're already using into Kubernetes saves you a lot of time. Uh, ECR for uh, your container images is, is very easy to use and very easy to integrate. Um, and then a really great tool as well is if you've never played with Kubernetes, uh, the latest Docker for Mac build actually has a Kube cluster built right in. Um, and so you have to enable it. Uh, but it's a really easy way to start playing without having to futz with Minikube. So Kubernetes for large teams. Um, at a larger size, um, Kubernetes is used. I mean, you can see here, these are all the companies who are, who are deploying it. Um, so Kubernetes is really suitable for all types of workloads. We're using it for both our data team as well as our application team at Calm. Um, so we run a lot of ETL jobs through Airflow and stuff like that. Uh, but we also run all of our server infrastructure in there. And so having this unified, unified platform um, enables us to write tooling once or per language environment and then deploy it across all of our services. So developers love that, DevOps loves that, uh, saves us a lot of time and makes uh, optics far closer to a single pane of glass. Uh, also, you know, sometimes we spin things up uh, on, on local infrastructure, on other clouds, and being able to have the same paradigms, the same resources apply universally has saved us time as well. And so, the other thing with Kube is whether or not, or whether you're doing a, a proof of concept project um, or moving something to large scale in production, the same paradigms apply. It's very easy um, to build infrastructure in a composable way. And I'll touch more on that in a minute. So how we're doing this, um, you know, we went from having one or two Kubernetes clusters at Calm to uh, now having uh, six or eight, somewhere around there. Um, and so Terraform has been a huge, huge win for us there. Uh, we use Helm as well to manage a lot of our service deployments. Um, and between those two things, we're able to uh, reuse a lot of parts of our infrastructure. And then as we build out new services, roll those things out um, in a very clean and composable way. We've also uh, created a, a unified logging layer with an ELK stack that um, allows us to have optics into you know, all parts of our stack, the proof of concept cluster to our, our production web server, um, all from, from a single endpoint. Um, we're also looking at tools like Service Mesh um, right now, uh, which will help us a little bit more in uh, sort of organizing the traffic um, and uh, having better optics into how packets are flowing throughout our cluster. So 
scaling infrastructure with Kubernetes, going from that maybe smaller size to the next step, um, Kube is a very safe bet. If you want to be able to um, build something, like I said, chances are someone has already done it. Um, and that's, uh, for a scaling team, very important. Not having to, to worry about your platform or worry about your infrastructure and knowing that you have the opportunity to choose and experiment with these new technologies uh, is, is a great thing moving forward and when choosing uh, a, a, a basic platform. And so being able to template YAML um, within Helm has helped us a lot when spinning up new services. We're currently in our, in our microservice migration path and being able to you know, take our, uh, our ELB code and our you know, Nginx routing code and um, use that in a, in a templated way and change some parameters, see that to work everywhere, uh, has helped us a lot and really reduced the amount of, sort of bugs and, and issues we've had in our, in our infrastructure code. Uh, with that as well, I, uh, Kubernetes helps us iterate really, really quickly. Having a proof of concept cluster where we can just immediately apply the YAML through a different kubectl config um, gets us up and running very, very quickly, helps us move things between stages really easily, uh, and has decreased the time that we spend QAing in between environments. So infrastructure is one thing, but how do you scale up development teams with Kubernetes? So at, at first, there was some resistance in bringing in Kube uh, at Calm, but after a couple months with it, developers really, really enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I love about Kubernetes is that um, it really starts to, to democratize infrastructure and give developers access into things that sometimes might be a little bit more arcane or on the DevOps side of things. Um, and it's really empowered them to be able to play with infrastructure options and inform how they write their code. Um, with that as well, we've been able to standardize our CI CD workflows um, uh, and have like a single kube connector that allows us to deploy into all environments and have better optics into that. Uh, with that as well, uh, being able to develop against kube locally uh, with Minikube or with Docker for Mac uh, has allowed us to, in a, in a very low cost, um, isolated way, be able to um, experiment with new things. And um, it's a great learning resource for teams as well. And so uh, I was concerned initially about how much time it would take new devs to spin up with Kube. Um, but after giving you know, one or two talks on, on kubectl and writing up a minimal documentation and a couple blog posts, uh, I think the team found it very, very useful. Um, and um, they felt like they had a very clear understanding of what the DevOps team was doing. Uh, I think largely due to, due to the community around that. So, you know, if you're looking to begin, where do you start? I would say the first thing that you need to do is get to know containers, your application, um, and how they work in a containerized environment. There's all sorts of gotchas there. Uh, but once you get that down, once you get your application running performantly within Docker, um, that's when you can start to think about architecture. Where are you now, and where are you looking to go? If you're thinking about microservices, um, Kube could be a really great fit if, you, if a monolith is better for, for your workload. Um, you know, maybe Kube isn't, isn't worth all of the uh, complexity. And so um, understanding architecture, thinking about the next steps that you have and where you might be a year or two out, um, if that complexity increases significantly over that time, Kube, I think, could be a pretty great fit. On top of that, quantifying your DevOps resources. Do you have someone on your team who uh, is interested in Kubernetes, who is willing to learn and take that time, and then share that with the team as well? Um, I, I do think that once you have one person who's passionate about something um, and really has taken the time to figure out um, how this can improve a team's workflow, uh, kind of the natural evangelism of that um, can help a technology really take root in a company. Um, and then after that, if you and your team decide Kubernetes is right, um, choosing managed or manual. Um, I have become a huge fan of EKS. It's, it's very easy to deploy. Uh, you don't have to worry about certificates or a lot of the things that you have to do uh, with COPS or Kube Admin and things like that. Much easier than a, a manual Kube setup. Um, so I, I would recommend definitely getting started with something like EKS. 
Um, but once you get there, experiment. Uh, Kube, uh, because it is so accessible, because there are so many um, people who are using it, uh, just play with it. Um, chances are, like I said, if there's something you want to do, someone's done it in Kube or someone's thinking about it. So ask the community, start to play, um, and uh, see for yourself. So thank you.